we as what we what we did yesterday was we uh talked about uh, uh we talked about water that, that ionizes and produces two ions one is h plus one the other one is oh minus one and uh, i told you about the concentration under standard conditions that uh, the concentration of h plus one and oh minus one ions is very less we talked about kw which was uh, in the kc expression you don't write water because water is in a very large excess so you don't uh, you don't talk about water in the expression because its concentration is a constant so whether you use this equation this equation you pretty much get the same expression uh, so that's that's known as so what's happened just a second I so said now this one is known as kw and I told you that the value of kw uh, that is 1 times 10 power minus 14 mole square dm minus 6 and it's always the same value except it only changes with temperature kw increases with temperature because you have more dissociation uh, and I did give you the concept of uh, of acids and bases that I told you that uh, the concentration in a solution of H plus one, uh, H plus one might go up, but simultaneously, in an acidic solution, the OH ions would come down. So the concentration, the product of the concentration, would still come out to be one times ten power minus fourteen at room temperature under standard conditions. And in an uh, in a basic condition, uh, the concentration of H plus one would go down, and the concentration of OH ions would go up. But uh, the product would still come out to be equal to 1 times 10 power minus uh, 14 in that case as well. So the product uh, remains the same uh, under standard conditions. And I told you that for tracking purposes, you don't, uh, I mean, why, I, I did explain why H plus 1, that you have to uh, always check the concentration of H plus 1 and OH ions for any reaction to take place. Uh, so for tracking purposes, it's a lot better if you take log. And I explained that when you take log of the expression of the same expression, ionic product of water, you take the log of it. Uh, when you take the log, uh, the log expresses everything in the powers of 10. It's much easier to make graphs out of them. Uh, so you take the negative log of everything. Uh, and anything that's getting multiplied, it becomes, a uh, uh, the, this operator multiplication and log becomes uh, addition but since there's a negative sign so it becomes subtraction uh, log of 1 times 10 power minus 14 is minus 14 but if you take a negative log it's going to be plus 14 anyways you get uh, this expression which is your final expression which is pH plus pOH now in all reactions I did explain why pH was important because uh, I mean somewhere I did explain why pH was important. Just a second. I said, so uh, I think right at the top, I did tell you that uh, when two things are getting are reacting with each other, the environment ma matters. And most of the time, the environment is water and H plus 1 and OH ions. Uh, every reaction has a particular preference, and you have to. Some reactions need more H plus one, some require more OH ions. So you have to constantly track the pH of uh, most reactions that are happening in solutions. So the first part is we're going to learn how to calculate the pH of solutions. Now, when it comes to pH, we are, I told you, we, we're not interested in OH ions. Why? Because if you get the get uh, uh, if you know the pH, then by default you would also know the pOH. Like it's it's pretty obvious that uh, uh, for example you have like if you're tracking H plus one and H plus one goes up, then it's understood that the concentration of OH ions is going to go down. If the solution becomes acidic, uh, an acidic solution is going to have fewer OH ions, and vice versa. If H plus one's uh, the quantity of H plus one goes down, then it's understood that the quantity of OH ions is going to go up. 
Uh, so you just have to track one of them. The other one is understood. Like, like you just track uh, H plus one, you don't track both of them because the other one is going to be a reciprocal of that. If one is going up, the other one is, go is going down. If there's more H plus one, there's going to be less OH ions. If there's more OH ions, there's going to be less H plus one ions. So you don't have to calculate pOH. You always uh, just stick to pH. Otherwise, there's nothing wrong with pOH, but the convention is you just you just calculate pH. And pH is simply simply the negative log of the concentration of H positive ions. Now it's very easy if uh, just a second. So calculating pH is kind of uh, really, really easy for strong acids. Why? Because they're fully ionized. So it's not an issue for pH for strong. So pH for strong acids, which we know that they're fully ionized. So for example, uh, I add HCl to water, right? So if I add HCl to water, uh, and let's say I, HCl is a strong acid. So let's say the concentration of HCl is 0 0.5 mole per dm cube. Now that means it's going to fully ionize. It's every molecule is probably going to break down into H plus one and Cl ions. So the concentration in the solution for H plus one is going to be 0 0.5 mole per dm cube as well, right? Is this clear to everyone? Like a strong acid fully ionizes, so so you can yes. directly so you, you can directly know the concentration of H plus one ions. You don't have to do any any uh, extra math. It's just uh, whatever is the concentration of the acid, the same is probably going to be the concentration of H plus one ions as well. Theek is this clear? Basra, is this clear? Yes, sir. Uh, and remember there's water as well, but the but the quantity of H plus ions that actually come from water are negligible. Like uh, we did discuss like water ionizes. So it produces, uh, it produces very few H plus ions. So in a solution, we can kind of assume that if there is an acid present, we can assume that most of the H plus ions are coming from, uh, from the acid. And the H plus ions that are coming from water are kind of negligible. So you can you can kind of ignore them. TK, so there are two things that are producing H plus ions. One is HCl dissociating, and the other one is water ionizing. But uh, we can kind of ignore water because uh, it's it's the number of ions are negligible. So calculating pH is easy. How do you calculate pH? pH is the negative log of H plus one concentration, which in this case is the negative log of 0 0.5. So what do we get if you take the negative log of 0 0.5? 0 0.30. So you're getting 0 0.30. So that means it's a it's a pretty strong acid. Uh, the lower the pH, the more acidic it, it is. Uh, so that's how you calculate pH. So strong acids, there is absolutely no issue in calculating the pH of strong acids like HCl. Uh, how do you calculate the pH of bases now? And specifically strong bases. And by bases, I mean alkalis in this case. It's, uh, let's say I have NOH. And NOH is uh, 0 0.2 mole per dm cube. And I know it's a strong base because it's going to fully ionize and it's going to produce Na plus one ions and OH minus one ions, right? Now, for a base, you can see that there is no, there is no H plus one ions anywhere. The only thing you have is uh, you've got OH ions, right? Uh, and it's a strong base, so it's going to fully ionize. So if there's 0.2 mole per dm cube of NOH, then the amount of OH ions is also going to be exactly exactly the same right is this clear yes yes so, so 
so now for bases, and, and there would be some OHNs that would be coming from water ionizing, but those OHNs are negligible. I mean, you can, uh, I mean, it, water hardly ionizes, so you can kind of ignore those uh, OHNs, right? So most of the OH ions that are coming in the solution are coming from, they're coming from NOH. So you can calculate the pOH now. Instead of calculating the pH, you can calculate pOH. pOH is the negative log of the concentration of OH ions. P stands for negative log. So what is negative log of 0 0.2? What do we get? Zero point six nine nine. So for this, you get zero point, uh, let's say seven zero, right? That's your POH. But remember, I told you no one discusses POH. Uh, what they do is they always convert it into pH. So we have this uh, relationship, which is that pH and POH, they must add up to be equal to 14. So I'm going to use this relationship and I'm going to turn the POH into pH. So uh, pH, pOH plus pH is equal to 14, which means uh, that 0 0.7 plus pH should be equal to 14. And my pH would come out to be equal to, it's going to come out to be equal to what, 13.3, right? Is this clear? Yes. So, so it's, it's coming out to be 13 point. Point three, uh, and that is what basic is. Uh, like you have a pH scale, and uh, in the pH scale, seven is what is neutral. Anything that's above seven, and remember there is no limit. Fourteen is not a limit. It could be fifteen as well. Anything above. Uh, Above that is going to be basic or alkaline, and anything below that is going to be acidic. Uh, why is neutral seven? Because neutral only has water in it. So if you take uh, if you take uh, the pH of water, where's water? As so a water has what concentration? I mean, where's the concentration? We wrote it somewhere. As so a water has this concentration. Like if you have pure water. The concentration of H plus one ions is going to be exactly one times ten power minus seven. If you take the negative log of this, you calculate the pH. It's going to come out to be exactly seven. So that means uh, the concentration is, is uh, pH seven means that's where the seven is coming from. You take the log of this, it's going to give you seven. I said, anyways, you you should be able to convert things back from uh, from pH to the concentration. So for example, uh, there's nitric acid. And the pH of this nitric acid is, uh, let's say 1.2. And they're asking you to find, uh, it's a strong acid, they're asking you to find the concentration of this particular nitric acid. What's the concentration of nitric acid? So you should be able to do the reverse as well. Uh, because now the pH is already given, right? So you should be able to do the reverse now. So pH is already given. That means pH is, what is pH? What does pH stands for? It stands for the negative log of the concentration of H plus 1 ions. Now you already have this value, that's 1.2. Uh, what you should do now is, do the reverse, you have to find the concentration of H plus one. The first thing is take the negative sign to the other side. So it's going to be log of the concentration of H plus one ions. And that's going to be negative of 1.2. And then you take the anti-log on both sides or the inverse log, I mean, whatever it's called. Uh, so you take the anti-log Now on your calculator, you just have to press shift and log. That would take you, that would give you the anti-log. Anti-log is simply 10 to the power x. 
So if you take the anti-log, the concentration of H plus 1 is going to be uh, 10 to the power minus 1.2. That's it. Use your calculator. Uh, you have to get rid of the log so you can find the concentration of H plus 1 ions. Uh, first, take the negative sign to the other side and then take the anti-log. So you get rid of the log on this part. So you just press shift log and then take input minus 1.2. So like if I can show you on the calculator where inverse inverse log is simply so this is 10 power x is the anti-log uh, over in this calculator I don't have to press shift uh, I'm just going to press 10 power x and I'm going to input actually I can't do this on this calculator just a second this one is a I don't know how to do this uh, 10 power x So no idea. Can you can you try and do this on your calculator? Like this. I mean, uh, anti log of one point two is like fifteen point eight four. No, nee, not one point two. Minus one point two. Like zero point six three. Zero point six three. Zero six three. Zero six three or six three? I think it's going to be zero point six three. Uh, yeah, 0 0.063. 0 0.063? Yeah. Okay. So this one is 0 0.0. 60 mole per dm cube. Now you found the concentration of H plus 1 ions, right? Uh, so you should be able to know how to calculate. Like if pH is given, you should, uh, you should know how to actually do the opposite and find the concentration of H plus 1 ions. You just take the anti-log of this. But make sure you take the negative sign to the other side. Like if pH is 1.2, take the anti-log of minus 1.2 because P stands for minus log. Get rid of the minus sign, take it to the other side and then take the anti-log. So if the pH is 7, you take the anti-log of minus 7. If the pH is, uh, so we can just do this very quickly. So if, if, if different pHs are given, all you have to do is, like if, if something has a pH of 3.5, What's going to be the H plus 1 concentration? It's going to be the anti-log, which is 10 per X, right, of minus 3.5. Okay, so uh, make sure when you're taking the anti-log, when you're getting rid of, the, rid of this P, you have to put a minus sign over here. Is this clear? Yes, sir. I said, now you've, you found the concentration of H positive ions, right? Uh, how do you find the concentration of nitric acid? It's going to be exactly the same because nitric acid is a strong acid. So it uh, ionizes completely and it produces uh, H plus 1 ions and NO3 minus 1 ions. So if this concentration is 0 0.063 mole per dm cube, then nitric acid would be exactly the same as well. So we found the concentration of the acid. And we're going to do a similar question. And this time in this question, we're going to do a base. So for example, a base has a pH of, uh, the pH is seven, not not seven, let's say it's 12.5. Uh, it's and the base is KOH. And I'm being asked to find the concentration of this base which is KOH. How do I do that? The first thing is uh, KOH ionizes, right? So it produces H plus 1 ions and OH minus 1 ions. So K KOH is a base. Now, not H plus 1, it, it produces uh, K plus 1. Now, for a base, remember you will be dealing with the POH. Uh, we will be dealing with OH ions, not H plus 1 ions. So, so it would be a lot better if you get rid of the pH and convert it into POH. Now, we know that pH and POH, uh, if you add them up, they should be equal to 14. So what would be the value of POH? POH would come out to be equal to, uh, it's going to come out to be equal to 1.5, right? Is this clear? Yes. 
I mean by taking inverse log? No, I've I haven't taken the inverse log. I've just used this. Uh, I mean, yet I haven't taken the inverse log yet. What I've done, I've done is I've I've used this. Uh, Use this property that pH and pH they should add up to be equal to fourteen. So I just I just use that property. But sir, if it's a base, why is pH given? If it's a base, then why is like pH given? No, that's what I'm saying. It's uh because I previously told you that uh, conventionally speaking, you just track H plus one ions. Uh, because I told you that. If, if because the OH ions is understood, like if you know that H plus one is going up, it's automatically understood that OH ions are going down. Vice versa. If, okay. So, so you don't track both of them; you just track one of them. So, conventionally speaking, uh, they're always tracking pH. So it's uh, one second. So, which is why you're always dealing with pH. You don't deal with pH. Uh, but obviously, for a base, you have to deal with POH because uh, bases have everything to do with OH ions. They don't have anything to anything to do with uh, H plus one ions. But again, uh, uh, any graphs everywhere in the world, you'll be tracking pH, so you can kind of find the POH by default. Uh, pH goes up, POH goes down. So POH is coming out to be one point five. I mean, together the sum should be equal to fourteen. Uh, now, once you have pOH, you can take the anti-log, and that's going to give you the concentration of OH ions would be uh, the anti-log, which is 10 power x. You use that. Of minus 1.5. And what value do, you, do we get? 0 0.0316. So we're getting 0 0.0316 mole per decimeter cube. So we found the concentration of OH ions, which is 0 0.0316. And the concentration of KOH would be exactly the same because it's a strong strong base. So they both are going to be identical and they're going to be the same. TK, is this clear? So remember, when you're dealing with bases, uh, turn everything into POH. Uh, I mean, although pH would be given, but you can easily convert the pH into POH and uh, then solve the question. And uh, because bases deal with the OH ions. So that's for strong acids and strong bases. Strong acids and strong bases are kind of easy uh, because they're fully ionized. Uh, so it's very easy to actually figure out the concentration uh, if the concentration is given, the H person concentration would be exactly the same. Now that's for strong acids and strong bases. Uh, sir? Yes. I have a question. Uh, when H2SO4 dissociates, there's 2H plus, right? Yeah. So if the concentration of H2SO4 is like 0 0.5, would it be the same as oh, that's, the 2H plus? I'm actually coming to it. Okay, this is oh, the thing right. I'm going to discuss now. I said now uh, I'm going to talk about I'm going to talk about uh, weak acids now. Now the problem with weak acids is, I mean, that's 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 the main topic. Like strong acids, it's kind of easy. Uh, weak acids. Uh, first thing, uh, they don't fully ionize. So we, know, we we won't be talking about weak bases. That's not part. Uh, that's not in our syllabus. So, uh, but weak bases are kind of exactly the same. Uh, but right now it's not part of our syllabus. They don't fully ionize. And uh, if and they form, uh, they form an equilibrium. They form an equilibrium. Uh, for example, I've got uh, ethanoic acid, right? Not all of it is going to ionize. Just a few molecules might ionize. And they would form CH3CO minus 1 ions and H plus 1. 
eins. Uh, so this is every weak asset would form this equilibrium, no matter what that weak asset is. Uh, if you have a thousand molecules, right? At equilibrium, uh, out of the thousand, maybe 998 are still intact. Two of them dissociate and they produce two of these ions and two of this, these ions. So, so weak acids, they ionize very, very weakly and they, do, and they don't they don't fully ionize. So even if you know the concentration of H plus one ions, uh, you wouldn't be able to find the concentration of uh, ethanoic acid unless you uh, you know what the equilibrium constant is. Uh, because uh, because the moles of H plus one and the moles of this acid are not going to be exactly the same. Is this point clear? Yes. yes, sir. So you might have a lot of acid, you might have a very high concentration of the acid, but maybe it's a very, very weak acid. So the concentration of H plus 1 ions would be very small. So the concentration of the H plus 1 and the concentration of the acid are not are no longer going to be equal. And how much it dissociates depends on the value of uh, the equilibrium constant. That is, that would be known as the dissociation constant. I'm going to come to that. So remember, any acid pretty much uh, ionizes in the same way. Any acid, uh, any weak acid. Like if I have NH4 plus 1 ions, it's going to dissociate and produce uh, NH3 and release NH plus 1 ion. If I have a butanoic acid, It's going to ionize and dissociate and C three eight seven C O double O minus one plus H plus one. And alcohol might ionize like you have ethanol. Remember we did discuss that they were very weakly acidic. So the H I mean they were even they had even weaker ionization compared to water. So C two H five O minus one ions would be produced and H plus, H plus one would be given off. So you can see a pattern over here. And we can, what we can do is we can uh, write a general equation for acid dissociation, which is, let's say I have HA, that's what an acid is. I mean, an acid has an H plus one that it's willing to give away. Uh, so it's an H plus one attached to something, right? An H plus one uh, attached to some random molecule. So I'm going to call that A. So there's an H plus one attached to something. It's going to dissociate and it's going to form a single H plus one ion and whatever left left of the molecule, right? Let's call that A minus one. Uh, for example, NH4 plus one dissociates, it produces an H plus one ion and some other random molecule. Let me write it this way. So is this clear? Yes. Okay, is this clear to everyone? Uh, like all weak acids are going to form this particular equilibrium, no matter what the weak acid is. It's going to form this particular equilibrium. Ibrahim, is this clear? Minahil? Uh, yes. See, but that is not the case with the ammonium last time. No, it's kind of, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not interested in A minus one. It, like, forget this. I mean, it's, this could be anything, right? I don't care what A, I don't care what A is. It's just that every weak acid, well, even this would not always be neutral. Like you can have, you can have an ion like HSO4 minus one. And it would dissociate and it would produce a SO4 minus two. And release an H plus nine, right? So I'm just just follow. Forget the charges on this thing, and forget the charge on this thing, right? Uh, but the pattern is the same. There's a molecule that breaks down, produces H plus one, and some other thing, right? So the pattern is exactly the same. Is this clear? Yes, sir. I said now coming to this. This is our general expression. for weak acid dissociation. There's one thing odd about this. Can anyone tell me what 
what's wrong with this? Every time there's going to be a molecule, it dissociates, produces exactly one H plus one ions. So do all acids produce one H plus, H plus one ion? Or can acids produce more than one H plus one ion? Yes, they can. Okay, so the thing that's odd about it, about this is that they are diprotic and triprotic acids. They are acids like H2SO4 that are capable of producing two H plus one ions or HTPO4, that's a triprotic acid that's capable of producing three H plus one ions, right? So, so why am I calling this the general expression for weak acid dissociation? Because I'm adamant that there should only be one H plus one, right? So the thing is, if you have a diprotic acid like uh, H2SO4, uh, the same dissociation pattern would be followed, even though it has uh, two H plus one ions, but what would happen is, let me draw the H2SO4 molecule. It's double bond O, and there's OH and and OH. I mean, this H breaks off and this H breaks off. Now, the two H's are not going to break off at exactly the same time. What's going to happen is there's going to be two dissociations. There's going to be H2SO4. It's going to ionize. One of the H plus one over here is going to leave. And what's going to be left is going to be HSO4 minus one and an H plus one ion would be produced. So that's, that's the first step. Uh, that's our first dissociation. So this H plus one, it has left. And you're left with the uh, HSO4 minus one over here. In the next step, uh, this molecule is now going to dissociate. So that's your HSO4 minus one. And it's going to dissociate now. And this other H plus one would break off and that would leave you with SO4 minus two and another H plus one ion would be produced. So you can clearly see that it's still following the same pattern, except that the dissociation is happening in two steps. There's A minus one and there's some H plus one ion that's being produced, right? So there's going to be two dissociations. First, H2SO4 is going to dissociate. And then after that, the HSO4 minus one is going to dissociate. Ethan, is this clear? that you're, you're having two dissociations, right? Yeah. And two separate dissociations. So, so the general equation that we wrote, it still applies. And also remember that these are completely two independent dissociations. Uh, sulfuric acid is not one acid. It's not behaving as one acid. I mean, initially there was H2SO4 that was dissociating. In the second step, there's something else that's dissociating. That's your H2SO, HSO4 minus one ion. The two things are going to dissociate in different ways. Can anyone guess which one is the stronger acid out of the two? Look at the negative charge over here. If an ion has a negative charge, would it be easier to gain H plus one or lose H plus one ions? Easier to gain H so it would be much harder for it to lose another H plus one ion, right? Uh, so this second dissociation is going to be very weak. So H2SO4 behaves as two acids. Like the first dissociation is uh, it's behaving as a strong acid. Like when it comes to losing the first H plus one ion, it behaves as a strong acid. Immediately after losing that, now you have an HSO4 minus one ion. That's behaving as the acid. That's a separate thing. That's a completely different species now. This thing is behaving as a weak acid. So remember, H2SO4 is not one acid. H2SO4 uh, ionizes stepwise. It At the end of the day, it produces two H plus one ions, but uh, the first one, first dissociation would be very easy. The second would be kind of very hard or difficult. So there would be two completely independent dissociations that are happening. Uh, and they would, and you're going to you're going to think of H2SO4 as two separate acids. One is H2SO4, the other one is this HSO4 minus one ion. Is this clear? 
Ethan. And, uh, and so when completing, we just use the first equation. Nee, it's more complicated in this case because uh, oh. uh, the first one, it would be behaving as a strong asset. Like if you have 0.2 mole per dm cube H2SO4, so then the amount of uh, HSO4 minus 1 ions produced would also be an H plus 1. It's a, it's a strong asset, so it's going to be 0.2 mole per dm cube of H plus 1, right? But when it comes to 0.2 mole per dm cube of, uh, I mean, I can write the values. Let's say I have 0.2 mole per dm cube of H2SO4. The first one is behaving as a strong acid. So 0.2 and 0.2 are produced, right? But now when it comes to the dissociation of HSO4 minus 1 ions, that's a lot more difficult. So the second H plus 1 dissociating is kind of uh, the amount that is produced after for the second dissociation, that's going to be a lot lesser. Is that clear? So you're going to treat it as two separate assets. Same goes for H3PO4. I mean, H3PO4 is going to ionize in three steps. It's first going to lose uh, one H plus one. So it's behaving as one asset. Then in the water, in the solution, you have this species. That would be the one that would be behaving as your second asset and that would produce HPO4 minus 2N and another H plus 1 would be produced. And finally, now in your in your solution, you have this HPO4 minus 2N and that is going to dissociate and behave as a third asset and it would produce PO4 minus 3N and produce another H plus 1N. So, HCPO4 would be behaving as three separate assets. The third one would be the least uh, acidic. It's going, to, it's, it's going to be the weakest asset because it has a negative two charge. So it would be very hard for it to actually uh, lose an H plus one. It would be more, it would be attracting H plus one very strongly. It won't be losing H plus one that easily. So this one would be behaving as a very weak acid. This one would be behaving as a weak acid. The first dissociation would happen and in the first dissociation, it would be behaving as a strong acid. So HTPO4 is not going to produce three H plus 1 ions. It's going to produce the first H plus 1 it would produce readily. The second one kind of uh, uh, it would have to, it, that would be very difficult to produce and the third one would be kind of impossible to let go of. Ethan, is this clear? So always remember that if you have a diprotic, triprotic acid, think of them as two or three separate acids. Uh, they wouldn't be treated as one acid. So let's continue with this uh, in the next class tomorrow then, TK. Okay. So